Hey guys, it's Matho here once again, and boy am I glad I'm still trying builds in this league because I think I may have stumbled upon another pretty fucking fun one. This time around, it is Dark Pact Totems. I don't play Totems very often, maybe like once a year, uh, because I just don't feel they're that there's that much to really discover or do there. And um, the last time I played Totems was, I think, maybe Wanding. Barrage, something like that, maybe Divine Eye. Uh, so I haven't had too much inspiration since then, but I was suggested to have a shot at some Dark Pack Totems, and we're trying to make it work, and turns out they can actually be pretty good. So the combo here is a Dark Pact with Astral Projector, so it makes the Dark Pact uh, actually ranged. Instead of um, going off at your character, or rather at the totem, and just going around a Nova from the totem, it then just targets it on enemies like a ranged nuke and completely changes up the uh, playstyle of the totem to be much, much better. So without an astral projector, I don't know if I could really ever recommend doing something like this, because uh, it didn't feel great until I put it on, but of course that was only level 40, but it did definitely change my gameplay quite a lot to have the Dark Pacts be uh, completely ranged, and on very open maps, um, you might be able to see an example kinda here, you just place your totems somewhere on the screen and they would just tear up the entire uh, screen and map around you. Whereas if you didn't have an astral projector, you'd have to place your totems like at every individual pack and it'd be quite a bit more annoying. But that said, the damage is actually pretty gross either way. So even without an astral projector, you can probably get these totems to do some serious damage because we are scaling off of the totem life. I think at this stage I got about 13 or 14,000 totem life. So they do get their added bonus from um, your totem life instead of your own health or using skeletons, since I don't have any skeletons, and it ends up hitting pretty damn hard. I haven't tested any full-blown endgame content because I'm only like just now getting to the high 80s or low 90s, I think. I only just hit 90. Um, and I think uh, if it holds up, if Path of Building isn't lying to me, I should have something like 12 to 15 million single target DPS, which is disgusting, considering that it hasn't been a very hard character to put together, gear-wise or, um, I don't know, passive tree-wise or anything really. It's mostly a requirement of Astral Projector, and then of course you can harvest craft a few nice little items, but nothing too insane. And somehow Dark Pact is just absolutely shredding. It's probably the first example of Dark Pact I've had in the past few years that I've been playing it, that I've actually thought it's been adequate so far, and a very um, nice build or enjoyable dark packed playstyle. I'm not a big fan of totems because as you can see you just have to run around and place totems every two steps and especially ahead of yourself when you're going into any content. So it does become kind of, I don't know, I guess a hardcore playstyle. You only really go as fast as um, you're willing to uh, risk yourself in. So if you want to be a lot safer, just place your totems, sit back, and never really take any damage and go a little bit slower. Otherwise, you do have to keep just mashing them totems and then running into packs and hoping the totems do the work for you before anything bad happens. And most of the time that does work out. I'd say it's a pretty hardcore viable playstyle, um, and the DPS and the survivability can be there depending on how you build it. I've only really just built uh, a bunch of life, like got some incidental energy shield as a Hierophant, um, that's just going to prevent a few extra hits um, before it obviously can't regen anymore, and then Mind Over Matter. So we do have a big amount of effective HP, but it just doesn't regen quite that thickly because the energy shield's only good for a few hits, uh, whereas I've got like 10% life regen, a lot of mana regen, so that stuff is pretty sustainable. And then you just have to play a powerful enough totem build, aka these Dark Pack totems, to uh, make sure everything is dead around you before you need to really uh, get any of your sort of life and effective HP back up. So it's been pretty good, it's been pretty safe, and I am just kind of uh, a bit blown away by how well these totems are performing, and it's probably uh, the only use of Astral Projector I've done so far that I've been very happy with, because I think the last time I did it was Discharge, Cast on Crit, and it was okay, whereas this is straight up tearing stuff up. Uh, these are just a few like high tier metamorphs and stuff, and you can see I've got a Cast While Channel Wither, uh, actually it's just a Wither, sorry, um, set up to also 
give us um, our own manual withered stacks as well as infused channeling and I've got an Orb of Storm set up for my curses too. So I do want to go over how I've built the character so far because uh, I'd say it's probably been one of the better totem builds I've ever played. So here is our character, level 90, called Exclamation Stadley. Uh, that's a command in my current Twitch chat that um, references the mod who suggested why don't try dark pack totems and then I spent the next hour, hour and a half hunkered down over path of building getting an absolute headache of how to make this a thing and how to make it work properly and uh, it, it seemed to have some sort of promise so that's when I just launched straight into it but I was pretty uh, miffed at the mod who suggested this because it ruined my life. But now I'm pretty happy with how it's going and here's our character. So Dark Pact is the skill we are based around. As you can see, it says um, use your life if no skeletons in range. So 6% of life to deal that much chaos damage. There are no skeletons in range. Uh, but instead of using your life, it's going to use the totem life. And we currently have six totems, each with about 13,000 life, I think. So the idea is to kind of stack a bit of totem life. And there's not that much you can do about that across the passive tree. Uh, we get a little bit of totem life down here. We get um, a little bit uh, through the cluster jewel, that one, uh, that one there. They're very easy to roll, like the totem jewels these totem clusters don't have any like heavy weightings they're just all a joke um and then a bit of chaos damage from just i don't know a generic as fuck uh little chaos jewel might try and upgrade that a little uh still have to get a couple of totem a uh, couple of extra uh, jewel sockets but uh there's also a little bit of totem life on our jewels as well there so totem life there um i think i had another one maybe 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 oh yeah these uh totem life there so a little bit there and then of course i anointed this one down here which is also totem life uh so in the end these totems do end up being pretty thick so they're not actually taking uh much damage from anything and they're not really ever dying but um they chunk away at their own health i think uh, when they're casting their dark pacts. So the other thing I mentioned that we're kind of building around is astral projector So it turns nova skills into basically ranged targets instead of just having novas around you So um, the difference there you should be able to see is like this. This is our dark pact normally It's just casted around the character as a nova if you put on your astral projector You can then drop these bombs wherever you want and the totems are pretty damn smart about their targeting. They're always targeting like enemies around the map. And the idea for me was to stack a lot of car speed so that they're just like clearing maps, um, everything around them really quickly. And I think it's one of the best ways to scale damage for us at the moment since um, it doesn't matter about the uh, life degen that's on totems, so whatever. So I've tried to get as much cast speed as I can across the character. What we did is grab a uh, profane wand and then put like misery essences onto it and then try and fracture the uh, just suffix and build around that. It's not really that necessary to fracture the suffix, but I figured it'd make um, hitting spell damage just a bit nicer um, because I then used uh, woe essences to just hit that spell damage and then just uh, slammed on some crit which got crit multi if it was crit and crit chance instead I would have kept that but we got crit multi and then the double damage focus likewise with this shield double damage focus but you start with the plus one totem um, pretty much yeah that's that's just what harvest is you start with one mod so I started with plus one totem and then you know custom made my shield around that uh, the entire video you just then saw did not have crit chance to spells I only just then put that on at the very end of the um, stream but it's as simple as having the crit uh, augment crit so I was farming my harvest um, most of the day got the crit augment and then finally at the end of the day uh, just then put that crit augment on otherwise I'm going to uh, try and get caster augment and see if I can hit that last prefix as spell damage or plus one chaos um, doesn't really matter neither is super important the plus spell damage would be quite a lot of extra damage plus chaos isn't that big a deal because we're not really scaling off of gem levels as much it's mostly about totem life Crit, crit multi, that sort of stuff. But our main links here, you can see a dark pact, 
crit strikes at the moment because I don't have that much crit, but I might still substitute that in the end game. Uh, spell totem, the higher level spell totem, the more totem life you will have by default. So a level 21 will go just a little bit longer of a way. Multi totem, increased area, that's awakened increased area and void manip. So for single target, currently I just sub out that if I need to, but that rarely needs to happen at the moment. The chest here is um, you can start with just additional curse once again. Harvest crafting, LOL. Uh, start with additional curse. Slam on spell crit. That's any cast. That's just cast up slam. That's going to happen. Slam on some life. Slam on some lightning res, some chaos res. Fucking just slam it all. Here's your chest. It's basic as fuck. Uh, and um, I might try and make it just a little better for life total in the end. Uh, you grab an 85 um, helm. This one I just got, got with uh, increased despair curse effect because I do kind of want negative curse, uh, negative chaos res as much as possible. Uh, and then hunter slammed it, so it'd be hunter influence. And then you build it around a life mod. So you get 90 life and then slam three chaos and you'll get chaos dispels, chaos res, chaos negative res. Fucking easy, very nice. Um, you can make one of these just with fossil crafting if you got an 85 anyway, so it's not that big a deal. It's just kind of saving you a bit of effort. Um, grab the ring, just this one was like 5C. It's a piece of shit ring, has a bit of life, some cast speed, and then I put Min Frenzy on it. Uh, put Min Frenzy on this thing as well, but with this one, you start out by grabbing a base that has, um, it's just a hunter base with mana regen. I put on some catalysts onto it, uh, the life and mana catalysts, and then use some essences of scorn. So that's crit multi essences until I hit a mana roll. So I hit a mana roll, uh, but it also came with mana regen, which is okay. I don't mind mana regen. I wanted to put on cast speed manually at the end of the day, but it came with mana regen. So whatever, we stuck to it. Uh, you then make sure that all your suffixes are full and you slam a prefix um, added chaos. It's always going to be added chaos skill gems. Actually, it could also be Chaos Leech, but it's like a 50-50 chance, so you do that till it works. Uh, put on life with a slam until you get a good life roll, and uh, there's your amulet. Pretty easy stuff. Praise Harvest, I suppose. And then just the fat boots, which are a dime a dozen. Extremely easy to make, and that covers a lot of our resists, but uh, I used these before in another character. Nothing special about those. And uh, likewise, get some uh, cast speed happening uh, with some Shaper gloves. And then just a silly little belt that does a bit of uh, defensive stuff. In there is a jewel socket that just has some life, grip multi, chaos to spells. You can get bigger on the chaos to spells, but they're pretty hard to roll without um, just putting a lot of currency into them. So it's a pretty basic bitch jewel, but you can't get much upgrade out of getting a better one anyway. So it doesn't really matter too much. So that's the gear taken care of. Um, you can see that we have not too much mana reserved because I'm using Mind Over Matter, so it's just Skitterbots at the moment. Give us shock and chill to everything around them. Uh, otherwise, I do have a setup here for my Orbis Storms, which is Orbis Storms, Assassin Mark, Despair, and Curse on Hit. So I've got two curses, and you only really ever need to drop this thing for big chunky events, usually bosses. Uh, it's not super important to have these curses up during trash clear. You got more than enough damage without it. Uh, over here we have Wither, Faster Casting, Infused Channel, and Arcane Surge. So it's mostly, once again, for single target, but you just spam your Withers. You can get those stacks up real quick at this sort of cast speed, and the Infused Channeling gives you 10%... 10%? Uh, yeah, 10% more chaos damage as well. Uh, we got Righteous Fire, which is just for Val pressing. Stone Golem, Skitterbots over here, currently just a Vile Blight over here, which pretty cool as well with Astral Projector, you can have a targeted Vile Blight. So usually it just casts around you, but with this you can stay at ranged and just drop a Vile Blight from the other side of the screen, which is pretty damn cool. Flame Dash, Second Wind and Faster Casting over here, because that is our travel skill. Uh, I still might put a Storm Brand with Power Charge on Crit up here because I don't currently get Power Charges anyway, but that is another button to press and it will be strictly for bosses, uh, so I'm not sure I'm doing that just yet. Our Ascendancy is the first four points, definitely these. They're so incredibly good while leveling and it makes a big difference. Uh, and then you can, it's kind of customizable, but this is the most defensive setup going for the Mind Over Matter and Mana Nodes. 
Um, so I'm not heavily built into mana yet, but it still does help. Otherwise, you can get some arcane surge shit. You can get um, the power charge shit if you want. Uh, there's no real right answer there, I don't think. And the passive tree, nothing too special. Basically a spell totem passive tree. They should mostly look the same, I think. And uh, getting the plus one totem there. Um, the chaos cluster doesn't do too much fa uh, fun, fancy stuff. But I might try and reroll to have the mana mod because there's one that does increase chaos for mana. And it's probably going to be just a little better than something like this. But not a very big deal. And then you can do the smalls to do like life or energy shield or mana if you really want. But I don't know. I've been happy with my defenses so far. So I've just chucked in my uh, regular one point jewels there. Not much else to say at the moment. We'll just have to see how it holds up in the end game. But fuck, it's been pretty good. Uh, it's not very much a starter friendly character because you basically need an astral projector. And I don't know how reliable that can be for... Uh, a new league or a new you know sort of um character to build into so that's the scary part the rest is pretty customizable but getting an astral projector might be tough considering it is an old league item from blight i believe that's it for this character's uh, video for now in the next one hopefully we are tearing up some end game and if we are then it's a very successful build indeed thank you very much for watching and see you next time